Morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is J.R. Moore coming to you live from deep in the mountains of the Missouri Ozarks. On Tuesday, the 24th day of September, year of our Lord 2019, welcome to the John Moore Show. We begin our shows with something that would turn the San Francisco City Council into babbling idiots to, to even hear this, but we start our shows with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Proper tip of the day, this is for the men, uh, and very few women, but this is a time of year, gentlemen, when you start getting out those chainsaws to cut up the firewood for the season. Almost none of you have or use Kevlar chaps like I do. Uh, I want to encourage all of you to please consider getting Kevlar chaps, and of course wear your heavy leather work boots, your leather gloves, and one of those special helmets with the hearing protection and the eye shield. Protect your hearing, protect your eyes. And that's the proper tip of the day. We have patient Wayne in the green room, my friend Steve Ben Noon. Steve has a website. That website is Israeli newslive.org there's a link for my uh, links page at libertyman.com we'll be talking about geopolitical matters and um, all kinds of topics if you want to call us the call number is 800-313-9443 good morning Steve good morning John how are you today I am well quite frankly if I felt any better it wouldn't be legal how about yourself <laughs> So, well, I guess that's a good way to put it. So, uh, yeah, maybe I could, I should say the same thing. So, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good today, and that, that that's nice. So, well, I I changed my morning workout. I I um, I, I do my stretching, uh, basically the same stretching I started doing as a as a runner, a sprinter in high school, and uh, then I do my 300 crunches, and my 100 push-ups I've modified slightly. I'm doing a, a deeper push-up to get more benefit from each of the 100 push-ups, and then do a little more stretching, and I'm done. It takes about oh, 12 to 15 minutes to do the whole thing, um, but I'm really pleased with the results, and uh, I just uh, continue to uh, modify and work on the things that will help, including beginning today I'll be doing the aerobics part. The anaerobic part, the sit-ups and, ch- and crunches is fine, but I'll be working on the aerobic part beginning today. I've got a one-mile trail that I walk here at my place. Uh, as soon as I walk out my back door and, and go up the hill, it's equivalent to walking up a 10-story building, and then I go from there to up and down these hills and enjoying the wildlife and God's gift to mankind, which is this beautiful planet. Uh, so that begins today, since the heat of summer is finally passed, and I can do so without a threat of having heat stroke. <laughs> wow. And, and John, how old are you? How old am I? I am 72 years old, sir. You know, it's interesting. I had a friend, I used to, we used to eat breakfast a lot. He was in his 90s, mid-90s at the time, and uh, he was still doing brisk walk, uh, couple of miles a day but he told me when he was in his 70s he said i started jogging and he said but you know steve i only did it at nighttime because i figured they would think what is this crazy old kook out here running for and uh he said he would jog five miles a day and he did that up until about his mid 80s and then he started just walking instead of the jogging so and to hear of guy in his 70s doing the push-ups and everything like you're doing i'm going to get my father-in-law moving then he's about 80 now so i'm going to see if i can't get him doing about 100 push-ups a day (laughs) well you need to start uh i started my workout program the current one in january uh with only 25 push-ups a day and maybe uh, 50 crunches and added to it incrementally uh, week by week uh, to get to the point where I could do 100 without feeling like I was going to die. Um, So you just can't jump in there from ground zero uh, doing what I do. At least that would not be very wise. Right. It has it has to be incremental. If if and this is for everybody out there. If you have any underlying health issues, be sure and consult with your health professional before beginning any exercise routine. Now I'm still a runner. I was going to compete this year in the 100-meter 100 100 meter dash again, but uh, my uh, caregiving obligations uh, got in the way of that. So um, I, I, I will be training uh, for the running events also, and once again uh, be doing the 100-meter sprint. Um, 
but I don't run on pavement. Uh, I always run on either a a, a special a track that has a special rubberized surface, or uh, or a um, uh, on on grass. Uh, running on pavement is not good for ankles and knees and hips. Uh, I don't care if you got a hundred dollar shoes or not. Uh, I don't run on pavement. Uh, I did once um, training in the army. And I found out the hard way that uh, that's not a wise thing to do. Uh, Steve, we got a caller and hold here. He goes by, or he or she goes by, Friend of the People, Illinois. Morning. Okay. Friend, you're on the air. Yes. Uh, good morning, Colonel Moore. The last time I spoke to you was probably 20 years ago when you were busy trying to sell Y2K backup generators. But uh, times have changed, and some people are still uh, waiting for this this uh, liberation that's coming from the Far East, and uh, as I am. But, uh, you know, um, last week was, uh, last Tuesday, I should say, was Constitution Day. But um, that's what you Americans believe in a constant U.S. Constitution, but there's a better document that's out there, and that's called the uh, U.N. Charter, which is actually updated and has uh, plenty of meeting for today. And uh, it's not going to allow most Americans to carry weapons uh, of their own choosing. They're going to have to turn them in and, um, you know, one one thing that could help your uh, weight loss program, Colonel Moore, is a, uh, is a re-education camp. And that, that could be invaluable to you. Do you well, have I any thoughts you should, on I think you should show up at my house and, and, and try to get me to get the one, sir. That would be a great opportunity for you. Well, you know, uh, I wouldn't do it myself i i of course uh, you would because you're a coward and you're an idiot and this conversation is finished sir goodbye um <laughs> they definitely got concentration camps coming yeah hey, right John, uh, no doubt about it so uh, unfortunately steve uh, uh, there's literally hundreds of thousands of men and women who believe what this uh, deranged individual believes and um, I, re- I started referring to them as the socialist, communist, Democrats, Muslims, because they've all united together in their insanity. Um, and um, I wanted to give him enough air time to make it really clear to all our listeners uh, of the psychosis of the caller. And I regard it as, as a complete psychosis to believe anything the United Nations does is good is obviously a psychotic, in my opinion. Um, well, that was an interesting distraction, Steve, um, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Um, so you already kind of had an idea where he was going to start with, then, John. So <laughs> it, it, it took me about 60 seconds. To, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know who this guy is. It, it, it took me about 60 seconds to figure out and determine who he was. Um, but um, it's, it's still America. He's still entitled to believe his freakish bizarre dangerous beliefs and as long as he keeps them to himself and doesn't try to impose them on anybody else that's fine that's what we do in this country um but the moment that his freakish bizarre dangerous uh, beliefs impose on me or any other american that's the line that can't be crossed what do you think steve well i agree you know the thing is john is there 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 is um that real threat that we're facing out there. And, of course, China uh, is definitely, I think, one of our biggest threats here in the United States, and uh, but probably in a way that we're not going to anticipate it. And, uh, yeah, they will want to have Americans rounded up and into their little... Um, into these little FEMA camps afterwards. Uh, you know, John, when you would mentioned to me, you sent me the text originally about this, uh, what, what FEMA was preparing for, and then I heard the other day over there, and they were they had mentioned you by name as well. They who mentioned me by name where? 
That's on. Um, oh gosh, ha- oh gosh, what am I? I Dave Hodges. I, I went blank on it, John. I actually went blank for some reason. I had it right there in my mind and just totally dropped what I was thinking about there. It's the. Um, mm. Well, it'll come back to you probably about yeah. nine o'clock tonight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I don't but... want it to be that long. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Let me say what they were saying, and then maybe okay. it'll jog my brain what I was trying to get out there. But they were speaking about uh, the EMP attack and uh, um, Hal Turner. That's where it was at, the Hal Turner show. Okay. They were talking about a possible EMP attack. They were um, speaking similarly from what you had said, that they had a source with uh, FEMA, that they were given these... Um, uh, the, the radios there, uh, shortwave radios packed inside a, a you know, a MP proof case, basically. Right. right. And, um, and, and, of course, their elaboration was is that they felt like that once uh, an attack of this type went in the upper atmosphere with some type of a nuclear device that would render the country uh, inoperable, so to speak, that this would be when China would, would uh, you know, of course their conjecture is that China would actually take at that point there and try to overthrow the nation. Uh, going back to the times when the one uh, uh, defense minister of China was re- being recorded and they didn't know it would end up getting leaked out, which maybe they did know it was going to get leaked out, who knows. Um, so, that that's one of the things, you know, and they were discussing the issue about disarming the nation, and this is one of the reasons why they wanted to do it. And uh, we could end up expecting to see UN troops uh, here in the United States. But uh, I don't know, you know, I mean, I, I believe these type of things are very real threats that we're going to be facing in the near future in this country. And because the only way... I don't know. You know, John, i tell you what, I, you, I, your thought really would be good on this because my mind right okay, now is well, in let's talk about EMP directions. A bit. You know, I, I've, I know more about EMP than, than most non-scientists, and um, uh, my, my, my belief has changed uh, over the last year or so, a year and a half, about uh, what the real threat of EMP is. For, first of all, you need to look at what the goal of our enemies are, uh, primarily Russia and China. You know, they want to capture a country for its resources. And being able to access resources in terms of agricultural production, uh, uh, petroleum products, timber, um, mining products, whatever it might be, coal, steel, uh, they need to have a functioning infrastructure in terms of the, um, the locks and dams that, that make our waterways work, the railroads, the uh, airports. Uh, and and so forth. A nationwide EMP, and of course the oil refineries uh, and the mines and and whatever is involved in mining industry, regardless, um, a nationwide EMP would wreck all that for years. Uh, You take out a, EMP takes out an oil refinery, for example, it'll be three to five years before they can replace all the electronics in an oil refinery. Uh, you knock out the uh, electronics of the lock and, locks and dams that make our rivers work for barge traffic, it will be years to, f- to repair all that. They don't want that. Uh, so I, what I believe they'll do, Steve, when it comes to EMP, is localized EMP to take out command and control of our military uh, as necessary to accomplish their goal. And they can also selectively knock out parts of the power grid using uh, hack computer hacking, which does not permanently damage uh, very much, if anything at all, and, and accomplish their goals that way, as opposed to a nationwide EMP, which I believe they, if we were in a full-blown war and they thought they were going to lose, then it would be a, a Hail Mary, well, let's blow these suckers up anyway, since we're about to lose the war, and then go ahead and do nationwide EMP. Um, so uh, that's that's my thoughts on EMP, uh, which I don't believe they're going to be changing, Steve. Yeah, I can I can uh, certainly uh, understand exactly what you're talking about. Not to mention that, uh, as you said, you know that the the desire is for the natural resources of this country 
Uh, I, I think back to the defense minister that that information from China that was leaked out, you know, he said that they would not make the mistake that uh, that Germany made when it come to having so many foes. He said America is their main enemy. And so that when they do go about trying to bring down this nation, they will focus directly on the U.S. only. But, you know, John, I don't ever see China making that move unless we were in a very um, uh, awkward position in this nation in the first place. I I don't see China or, or any nation for that matter other than if it's a situation between the United States and Russia, if for some reason we ended up in a conflict, China, I don't think, is just going to jump out there and say, oh, let's go ahead and take down America. Um, We would have to have something happen in this country internally, I believe, that would cause uh, any nation to say, well, now's the opportunity. Uh, Let's take advantage of that because... uh, it, it just, I mean, what, what's your thought on that, John? I just, I just don't see that happening. Well, I don't either. And um, uh, the threat posed by Russia and China and their allies is a clear and present danger. Uh, the dream of every general, if he's going to be going into war, is to be able to pre-position men, supplies, and weapons, pre-position them where the war is going to take place. Now, that's already happened. All the, all the, the men the supplies and the weapons have been pre-positioned inside this country. They've been pre-positioned in Mexico, all over Central America. Um, That's the bad news. The good news is that President Trump has reached out to the president of El Salvador, which is a a between Nicaragua and and us, uh, possibly looking to make the El Salvador an ally. I don't know if that's going to be successful. But uh, it would be a good thing to have an ally uh, as a blocking force between Nicaragua and our country. And we have a break. The call number is 800-313-9443. We're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge. And knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. Back with another chair of war here on Tuesday, the 24th of September. 
I'll be speaking in Orlando, Florida on Friday, the 8th day of February. The uh, location is yet to be announced, and, and most Steve's figured it out. And then the following morning, all of us that are going on the cruise will be leaving on the cruise. Saturday, the 9th day of February, we'll be gone for a week. It's a beautiful, the largest ship they make, the Harmony of the Seas, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. The ship has 20 restaurants on it. Can you believe that? 20 restaurants. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we hope to get word from Sam Andrews and his wife that he'll be going. Uh, we're wait, waiting patiently for that. Otherwise, myself, Leon Green, and, and as many folks that want to come will be going with us. Details at my website at thelibertyman.com. If you'd like our cruise director, Betsy Murphy, to mail you a full-color brochure, I met with Betsy briefly yesterday. Betsy's telephone number, twice, slowly, 636 530 Nine five zero two. I say again, six three six five three zero nine five zero two. Visiting Mr. Steve Ben Noon. His website is Israeli News Live. Israeli News Live dot org. I believe it is, isn't it, Steve? Yes, it is. Okay. Do we have a venue yet for our speaking engagement on Friday the eighth of February? Next week we will have all the details that we can announce, and I'll also have it on the website by then, John. Okay. Um, and uh, that way people will know more about it. I just have to finish doing the final details with them, but it should be the uh, Hilton there in Ultimate Springs, Florida. Um, the, the, it's actually the Embassy Suites by Hilton is what it is. Uh, that will be the venue location. We just have to do the, the final confirmation with the, with the uh, folks over there, getting all the paperwork in line for that. And, all right. Uh, all right. And uh, in February, the, the temperatures in Florida should be uh, quite uh, moderate and, and quite pleasant, I would think. Yes, it should be about like what it is for you right now. <laughs> All right. Well, um, <laughs> thank goodness. Um, <laughs> A break in the heat, but not got rid of completely. <laughs> so. You know, just a few miles north of you is Sanford, Florida. I don't know if you've ever been there or not, but uh, the airport at Sanford, Florida was the command and control center during the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, I have been to Sanford before. So. They still have the original tower there, unless it's been torn down. I haven't been there for quite a few years. A friend of mine was an aviator stu aviating stu student there. They have one, a world-class uh, aviation school there. Uh, but it's kind of, kind of an interesting little factoid uh, that they uh, that's where they ran the, uh, the missions, um, the Air, the Air Force missions in and out of there during the Cuban, Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, it would have been, what, 1962, I think? 62? Or 61, whenever it was. Um, well, Steve, uh, getting back to the clear and present danger posed by the uh, socialist, communist, Democrats, mu Muslims, um, people need to be aware of this. Uh, you and I, we're watchmen on the wall. We have access to privileged information from private sources. We've passed it along to people publicly so that they can incorporate it into their base of knowledge and then make informed decisions, correct? That's exactly right, John. It's, it's um, not every day these people are willing to speak these things, and, of course, they do it at their at risk to their own, uh, in some cases, jobs that they're continuing to do. Uh, so to give us that information to, to make us uh, well-informed. And, you know, th that danger is very real. Uh, oh, it is. And having the threat of loss of a career, paycheck, and pension is no small thing. And I've, I learned as a very young man in Vietnam that men will put their career, paycheck, and pension ahead of doing the right thing. And once these men got to be a E6 and above, in, in the uh, enlisted ranks, they would keep quiet about how wrong the Vietnam War was. Uh, mo almost all the officers, especially once they got ab above um, uh, company grade, they would keep their mouth shut because they had a career, they had a family, they had a pension to look forward to, and why should they jeopardize all that to tell the truth? It didn't make any sense to them, so they didn't. That's it. That's exactly right, John. And the thing is, is, you know, what people don't realize is what went on then is going on today. Uh, 
my father actually had to leave the Navy because of those very things. You know, some of the things that he was outspoken about cost him uh, after he'd already served nearly, uh, well, he's close to about 20 years, about 18 years, and uh, he had to leave as a result. Um, or, and was that during Vietnam? Uh, he was in Vietnam, but it was actually the Vietnam War was not the issue for him, John. His issue was, um, you know, there there was a lot, of course, back in those days, I'm sure you'll remember, there's a lot of still prejudice uh, in the military. And um, he saw one black man that was being railroaded pretty bad for something he knew that he didn't do. And uh, he stood up for him. And, of course, you know, that was still a rarity, you know, but uh, the thing was, was he just, he felt that in his own way that he just, he couldn't deal with it any longer. So, uh, well, so he, he ended up making the choice to leave his own. Hold that thought. We got a caller and hold. We got a break. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Ladies and gentlemen, J.R. Moore here. We have a special promotion going at Republic Broadcasting. This is a fundraiser for Republic Broadcasting involving the Energy Clinic. Mail me a postcard. My address is at my website at thelibertyman.com. We pick a postcard every other Thursday. When your postcard is drawn out, you get to buy an energy planner for $215 instead of $285, $70 discount. $200 goes to Republic Broadcasting. You also get a 10% discount on my mattress pads. So get those postcards in, put your name, your telephone number, your email address on there, and when your postcard is drawn, you get to get an energy planner for $215 instead of $285. Mattress pads, 10% off. Help us out at Republic Broadcasting and help yourself to get an energy cleaner at a deep discount. It's a win-win situation for everybody. We hope you can get these postcards in soon. Thank you very much. Back, ladies and gentlemen, J.R. Moore here on Tuesday, the 24th of September. My website is thelibertyman.com. That's thelibertyman.com. If you're living with arthritis pain, and I know many of you are, Energy Cleaner will help you. It will, seriously. You got joint pain, back pain, Energy Cleaner will help you. Would you like to sleep as well as a small child every night like I do? You need an Energy Cleaner. $285 should be included to American zip codes. Keep in mind, I offer for me to you personally a 90-day money-back guarantee. Check out the energy cleaners, the mattress pads that go with them at my website at thelibertyman.com. We can place your order using PayPal, MasterCard, Visa. You can send me a check. My address is right there. You can also call my toll-free order line 24 hours a day. Order line only. Don't try to call me at 800-592-9543. I say again, 800-592-9543. Visiting Mr. Steve Ben Noon. His website is israelinewslive.org. And we're taking your questions and comments. Uh, Steve, we've got two callers on hold. First, we have John in Tennessee. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Good morning, Steve. Steve, I'm wondering about the 27th coming up. I've been looking into it a little bit, and I found out that Nikki Haley had been invited. Do you know whether or not she's accepted or whether anyone else from the United States? going to go and represent i haven't heard anything as far as u.s uh, representatives there where the sanhedrin has invited the 70 nations there uh not saying that they may not i know that uh, michelle bachman uh was uh recently on board trying to move uh you know in support of moving the hague uh, the international criminal court to israel but i'm not i'm not aware of anything as far as this uh, the 27th meeting, and whether or not the U.S. will have any officials represented there. 
Well, I hope not. What's what's frightening, Steve, is that Nikki Haley and Bachman both supposedly, <laughs> I, I, I don't even want to use the word Christian, because this sacrifice is not, it's not originally sanctioned by Israel. I don't know if anyone listening is aware of it. It's the children of Noah, which is something entirely different. They're talking about making, you know, instituting the Noahide laws, which would make every Christian a idol worshiper, subject to beheading. And if you move, and if Bachman gets the Hague moved to Israel, they're, they're just stating out loud that they're for global government and a world court, a one world government, decapitation. I mean, they're not stupid people. They know what the agenda is. So why is it, Steve, that the church, the body of Christ, is asleep to what's going on in Israel? I would agree. There's a lot of uh, sleeping uh, Christians out there not recognizing the things that are coming. And I think a lot of even the things that uh, John and I have been speaking about earlier with China and the threat we face here in the United States, uh, a lot of these things are linked together. And I've got a friend in the Mossad that could tell you that as well. Uh, so... But uh, only time will tell on that that issue there. But yeah, I uh, Michelle Bachman had contacted me back in 2016, and uh, I saw her making a 180 degree turn. So, you know, she's really distancing herself from 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 things that she knew to be truthful, um, and she very clearly had an agenda laid out. So. Uh, and then when I saw her involved in the uh, Netherlands, I was not surprised at all. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for having okay. me on, John. One more question, one, if I can. Go if ahead. You had a choice, part. gentlemen, but you had a choice between a totalitarian dictatorship or a tyrannical dictatorship and a Soviet. And I know that's not a good choice, but if you had you're forced to choose between the two which would you choose running out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> <laughs> well, if you had to choose which would you choose well it, it, and i know a it's person, a difficult question a person could characterize a absolute monarchy as a dictatorship uh, as synonyms it's been said there's nothing better than a good absolute monarchy and there's also nothing worse I said, than I a said bad tyrannical. absolute monarchy <laughs> I um, said a tyrannical dictatorship. Well, uh, so if you had my to choice choose, would be to would my choose? choice would be to escape. That would be my choice. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's the same for so, me. So really, really, the way that we're going, and and I don't want to say, I don't want to take the choice either. But if I were forced to say one or the other, I would choose this over, and then fight to change it. So well, good luck on that. You know, I, I'm in a, I'm. In a, <laughs> Well, good luck to changing a tyrannical dictatorship as well. But okay. That's where we're headed. So are the Soviets... Well, it's, it's, are an inter- it's, an interesting, it's an intellectual exercise, but that's all it's ever going to be. Right. John, we, thank, we thank you. you for your call, sir. Next, we go to another John. It's John in Tennessee, uh, in uh, Texas. Good morning, John. Good morning. I have a, que- uh, a kind of a new lies for old type question. Um, well, all these... Uh, you know what... what well, all these uh, so-called changes were taking place in Eastern Europe and the so-called breakup of the Soviet Union. China had a Tiananmen Square, and they suppressed the uh, the movement there. Uh, the the protests or added a cause to reform there, but um, what in fact was was going on behind the scenes in China and East Asia? While all this was going on in Eastern Europe, and uh, what was there, what, what did we know about what they were aware of? How much were they in on the scam? Well, it's difficult to know about what was going on behind the scenes uh, because it's behind the scenes, and of course, uh, they were they being the powers that be in Eastern Europe and China were the orchestration. They orchestrated these things to happen. Uh, Steve, you got any follow-up on that? 
Well, I do know that China is heavily involved in Eastern Europe and, um, of course, living over in Eastern Europe as well for four years, I uh, got to see firsthand um, the amount of Chinese involvement in, in the purchase of lands as well as uh, companies uh, in Eastern Europe. Uh, and, and, and quite frankly, I know that, in fact, there was an article that just came out recently about uh, uh, the Florida governor um, speaking about China being one of the greatest threats to the United States because they're all across the world overtaking natural resources and, and Africa. Uh, and, you know, but there's there's a lot more to it, John, than what a lot of people realize. They, they have no idea. It's just like, for example, back in the 90s. A lot of our major manufacturing companies were all being moved over to China. Um, well, our, and before you go any farther, our U.S. Congress provided financial incentives for these companies to move. Sure. And, and you know, John, I mean, uh, being that I, I come from a Jewish background, I got a lot of wealthy Jewish friends, and including those that were moving the companies over there. Uh, so I know a little bit more about a lot of the reasons why they were doing this. Uh, the, 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 there was a major desire to be able to get the products built for, for pennies on the dollar. And, uh, and, and of course, China was the place to go. Uh, it is, it is a, there's a fascination, I should say, for the communist way, the communist regime, uh, and what they can get done for next to nothing, but yet still sell the product to, um, I have to say, Western civilization. It's not just the United States, uh, Canada, uh, Western Europe, et cetera, uh, and still make a ton of money on it. But also, too, there's a, there is the, the knowing what was coming in the future. You have to understand, for 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 Jewish people, it's, and not, not the common Jewish everyday person, but especially in the elite circles, there are plans that are laid out years and years and years in advance, especially those that are in the, the Kabbalistic circles, uh, under the studying under people that most of your listeners probably would not even know who I'd be talking about, but the Vilna Vaughan, et cetera. Uh, and these are uh, plans that are put in place for the infrastructure of the way society would go in the future. And uh, and they they've known that Western civilization would be brought down. Uh, they have known that the East would be where the economic um, uh, move would be. So therefore, these wealthy Jewish men knew to move their companies out of the United States. And of course, the uh, the lobby that we have in Congress uh, made sure that they were able to get the incentives they needed to to to, to help facilitate this major undertaking. Well, it's a shame. It's a shame. John, yes, any, any, we, anything else, John, before we move on? We need we need to move on here. All right. Um, another thing. What is the, you know, since you're on the subject of the of the wealthy Jewish families, what families involved in this, um, what do you, is the relationship, do you know, of, of the creation of communism and and secret societies such as Masonry, the Sabbatean Frankists, and the uh, and other esoteric groups that were not they were operating in the late 18th century or and in the 19th century. Is there? Did they were the, is not, the communism sure. a front for secrets? Oh, I want to ask uh, well, your your we guess. We got six what minutes is, before the next break. You've asked a question that would take two thousand pages to answer in detail. John, thank you for your call. What can you say as a quick response to a incredibly complex question, there, Steve? Well, I, I think what he's what he's referring to, uh, John, is that uh, there were a lot of infiltrations that were going on, uh, especially in the Freemasonry. We know that back in the uh, late eighteen hundreds. Uh, uh, in 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 Europe, and it is a very complex question. But in Europe, there was infiltrations uh, where they were allowing the, um, the the Jewish people in in the elite circles of the Jewish people to join into Freemasonry. Uh, this is where they heavily affected uh, some of their teachings. And I'm not I'm not trying to con 
uh, can uh, say that Freemasonry is a good organization to begin with, but just yes, there there is a lot of that, and the and he's talking about the Sabbatean uh, Frankist, uh, which is a very evil sect, and they were the ones that did get into the Freemasonry. Uh, but it is a, it's a complex issue. It goes into uh, steering the world <clears throat> in the direction that they wanted it to go into. And, and right. w- one simple thing I'll say, John, to this is that there is a um, uh, in, in all these complex issues, we can go back uh, 200 years ago in the writings that were being made by these elitists. And they had, even down to the generation names that we see today, Generation X, uh, that they talk about, Gener- X, Generation Y, etc. These are all being taken from the plans uh, of what they call the, uh, the utopia. That they're, they're what, and, and everything's following the script, believe it or not. Uh, well, that's too deep. <laughs> that's just, you're right. It would take hours. It'd take weeks to bring. Yeah, all yeah. This. yeah. It's a, we're a talk show. We we it would take a uh, an entire semester at a university to cover this. Uh, we got an, our next caller is Murr in Wisconsin. Good morning, Murr. Good morning. Well, Rabbi Stephen Weiss says some call it communism. I call it Judaism. All of this is spinning out of the ones that love money. It's either Christ or Antichrist. We're in a spiritual battle, and we all know that. And to get away from that <clears throat> is to get away from the media. It is their media based on mammon. Of course they know the generations because they're telling us what ear tags they're going to put in us and what feed lots. Don't follow their script. When they call you That's a that. baby boomer, say, no, honor thy father and thy mother. All right. This is That's important. good advice, sir. That's imp- yes, you're right. it is. You're right, Murray. It is important, and we, we do thank you for your call. And keep your eye <laughs> um, on these sacrifices. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Thank you, Murray. We appreciate it. Um, yeah, that, that's good. Murr is, is giving some wise counsel there, isn't she? She is. You know, if people keep their mind on Christ, if they keep their, their, their thoughts on the Word of God and stuff, that's the best thing because you're, she's right. You know, the, the mainstream media, everything is ran by the same cabal, and they are following their own script. And uh, the thing is, is, we have a script. It's called the Bible. And uh, just go by that, because what's coming is going to be very sinister, John. And, I mean, it's going to look so much like uh, the real deal, and I'm seeing it. I mean, this this major push uh, uh, of trying to get Christians to go underneath Talmudic rabbis, I'm thinking to myself, my gosh, I thought Jesus said about the Pharisees, you're of your father the devil. And that's not meaning Jewish people, per se, but, you know, if we've not seen a change in that type of teaching mentality over the last 2,000 years, you know, pray for my brothers and sisters that are Jews that they will recognize Christ as well. But don't go back and and, and sit underneath that type of a teaching. That's like insanity. It is. You know? Well, well. in addition, we've got the Pope advocating that uh, Christianity, that the Catholic Church merge with Islam. Yeah. Uh, how insane is that? That's just as wacko as the rest, you know, and 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 that's you know the Pope is warning. I mean, he had this uh, the, he had this huge giant serpent in the Vatican uh, not too few months ago there, and he was saying that he was trying to bring in. Uh, um, you mean uh, a piece of artwork, uh, a statue, what? It was it was to represent a particular god of uh, I forget the name of that religion. Uh, that, that he was that he was trying to embrace, but it was to be inclusion, just like you said. They're trying to join back up with the Muslim religion, you know. And uh, he was some other wacko religion out there that he wanted to join into, and they run around with a giant serpent in the in the Vatican. And it, I would say some type of artwork is what it was, like a like an oil painting or a statue or something. Yeah, like that. something like that, kind of more like what the Japanese use when they're do or the Chinese do when they're having their festivals and they're running through with the dragon. Oh, the sure, the, sil- the silk dragon it. with somebody holding up on a stick. Yeah, exactly, something yeah. like that. No. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 St. Louis is a major Saint, uh, Catholic town, and uh, consequently, you know, I, I was married to a Catholic woman, and of course, and uh, it's, it, on one hand, the Pope is supposed to be infallible. On the other, 
most Catholics I know don't like this guy, <laughs> this Pope. <laughs> I, don't know how, don't. I don't know how they can hold these discordant uh, thoughts in their brain at the same time, but but they do. Well, you know, I was told when we were doing the conference here in Orlando uh, not too long ago, there was a couple of Catholic girls that were there, and they said to me, they said, Steve, we support what you do, but you need to understand one thing. The Pope that we have now is a crypto-Jew that has infiltrated the Vatican, and he's not a real Catholic. But according to their own religion, he's infallible. How about that? we got a break. We'll be right back. Public Broadcasting Network depends on listener support of our advertisers and of our sponsors. We'd like to especially thank all of you who have taken advantage of our fundraiser with FrontSite Bonus. Those who are now FrontSite members, please train as soon as possible for your sake and for that of our nation. And please consider sharing your training and what you've learned when you arrive home. Republic Broadcasting Network has to stop promoting this fundraiser on air and on the website in just a few days. Dr. Ignatius Piazza, president of FrontSite, made a gracious exception to his no-media rule for us at Republic Broadcasting Network. Thank you, Dr. Piazza. And once you've been to Front Sight, feel free to call your favorite host and share your experience on the air. We can continue this fundraiser without media help, but it'll be totally up to the listeners to spread the information. Please call Dan Sutterfield in Missouri at 573-465-2356. 573-465-2356. That's 573-465-2356. His website is israelinewsalive.org. There's a link at my website at the links page. We're our last caller here, Steve. We've got Glenn in Pennsylvania. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, John. Hi. Um, just a real quick note about the, this notion of the infallibility of the Pope. Um, the Pope is only considered infallible when he makes um, what are called ex cathedra statements from the throne of St. Peter. And there are only a handful of those pronouncements that have been made, like three in the 20th century or something like that. So on a day-in, day-out basis, the Pope is not considered infallible in his proclamations. And he is subject to correction by groups like the College of Cardinals and the Holy See and that sort of thing. So uh, he's tremendously influential, obviously, but but not technically infallible. Uh Aha. Well, that's good information. We appreciate that, Glenn. Thank you, sir. Um. The Catholic Church is in uh, turmoil, to say the least, aren't they, Steve? Well, you know, the one thing that I look at when I see the situation in the Catholic Church, like I said, the when these ladies had come to the conference here, uh, that really give me some education that I was unaware of, because there's a lot of good Catholic people out there. And uh, but to hear that in their words that there was an infiltration, and and then not only that, John, I had a uh, there was a Catholic uh, news organization. I shouldn't say news organization. As a Catholic church, it writes news articles, uh, and they wrote an article about the things that I was speaking on at the time. Uh, it's been a couple of years ago about the Catholic churches, specifically under Pope Francis. And uh, and they were in agreement with me. And I was totally shocked that they were in agreement. And, of course, the issue was I was speaking at that time when uh, Pope Francis had gone up on the uh, on Mount Zion in the uh, above the tomb of David and held his communion service. And I had uh, said that he was fulfilling prophecy out of Obadiah where it said they would drink upon uh, God's holy mountain, and uh, which is not a very favorable prophecy. Uh, mind you, but uh, I knew it because in Hebrew we can see it a little bit easier than you can in English because in Hebrew it clearly shows that it would be men only that would drink, uh, they would have a communion service, and it would be on Mount Zion. Uh, And then the nations would continue to follow that tradition. And, of course, afterwards uh, they continued to do these communion services, and it was no longer just the Catholic Church, but all the other churches began to get involved 
Uh, and, and I always, I even said in the beginning, I didn't have a problem with the Catholic Church doing this in the upper room. I said, okay, it's a Christian site. But when they threw the Jewish people out of the tomb of David and did it in there as well, I'm like, that's showing that you now have the authority uh, beyond that of what in the Israeli government and in enforcing that, that seemed to be just a little that bit. That was a, a one a one time, one day deal for a ceremony. Uh, it, no, it wasn't one time. Uh, now, the one time they did it in uh, King David's tomb, yes, it was one time there. And it did cause such an outcry in Israel that finally they, they put a stop to it um, after doing it for several months there. Uh, so, But who knows? You know, I, the Catholic Church does. I, I used to think they had a lot of swell. Steve, thank you, sir. We're out of time. I'll be back next Tuesday. Talk to you then. Take care, okay. Jack. We have a break. We'll be back with Leon Green. Stay tuned. Our prepper tip of the day. This is the time of year when men and a few women get their chainsaws out and start cutting firewood. I encourage all of you to please consider, do this for yourself, please consider getting yourself a pair of Kevlar chaps. Make sure you wear your heavy leather work boots, heavy leather work gloves, you get one of those helmets that got the hearing protection and the face shield also, so you got proper protection. It's just a really smart thing to do. Chainsaws are incredibly dangerous pieces of equipment, and um, you need to do the, the right thing and make sure you get proper protection. We have patient Wayne Green with my friend Leon Green. Leon is a gentleman who began a quest more than a decade ago to become quite knowledgeable in anything and everything you do with incorporating doTERRA essential oils into your daily life so you can have a healthier life, a more prosperous and pain-free life, and be able to do the things you want to do. Good morning, Leon. Good morning, John. And I agree with you in doing the things you want to do. This last weekend I did a Op 4 um, class with a bunch of uh, ready men, a bunch of special forces. And there were 15 people in the class along with five Op 4 and we we had the very expensive laser simulators where you'd get shocked if you were delinquent in your in your cover of concealment. So uh-huh. you were running around. This, <laughs> so yes, I, you could hear the people yeah. when they get tagged at that ten, and you'd hear them scream, "Ah!" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Well, I got I see a photograph here that you forwarded to me of the students and the instructors. Looks like we've got um, about six or seven guys in a kind of a desert pattern, and then uh, the rest, uh, well, maybe seven or eight in the desert, and then several in the woodland pattern, uh, camouflage. And what was the location of, of this training? This is north of Salt Lake City by about 10 miles, and uh, bountiful. And it was very, this man has 90 acres, 96 acres up in the hills, and He's got everything, paintball courts, I mean, forts all over the place, swimming pool, and two pools, one side outside. It's, it's just incredible. And, and, um, and, and when, you were th- when you were talking about, not to change the subject too fast, but when you, I agree with you. Normally I don't spend that kind of money on personal protection equipment, but I remember when I was like 11 years old, my, my father cut himself with a chainsaw. He bled all over the place. He went to the hospital. So he had huge stitches, and, and saws are very are very nasty in the fact that, you know, lacerations, it's avulsions, and it's highly susceptible for infection. So, you know, if, if you have an emergency like that in regular times, it's bad. But when, if you have it when there are no medical facilities, amputation and fatalities would be bad if you, would be typical if you do not have access to higher end medical uh, trauma. And so, you know, I, I have the helmet. I bought the Kevlar gloves. I got the chaps. I know we don't go full bore. And that, and I did because I saw my father who must lose his leg, so it got my attention. So well, I wanted to. Uh, that's you know. that's a, a very uh, to have that happen right in front of you to somebody you love is is a very traumatic, to say the least. And uh, these, these uh, a chainsaw is nothing to be taken lightly. It's the power, the, the ability of a chainsaw to cut through human flesh is phenomenal. Of course. Hollywood's made uh, some great movies. Uh, I wouldn't call them great, but f- horrific movies <laughs> using a, using chainsaws as a as a weapon of mass destruction. Um, so yeah, uh, 
and I, I've never, I can't, other than people, uh, men working for professional uh, landscaping outfits that were they're required by their bosses to wear them. I never see men wearing Kevlar chaps, um, <laughs> unless they're re- mandated and required to by their employers. Um, they simply don't, and um, it reminds me. I, I see people riding motorcycles with flip flops and shorts, and I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> these people are not, you know, they're insane. You know, they, there's no protection at all. I, I don't. I will not ride my motorcycle without my um, my my armor. Uh, when it's cool weather like we're having at the moment, uh, my leather jacket has armor to protect my spine, my shoulders, my elbows. When it's hot weather, uh, my jacket is a, a mesh that lets the wind go right through it, still having the armor on the uh, spine, the uh, shoulders, the arm, the uh, elbows, and, of course, my leather chaps, um, which uh, most of the time is adequate to protect people from uh injuries when a motorcycle go, uh, goes down. And I noticed a photograph of you here, Lynn. You had your knee pads on. I didn't I didn't notice. Did you have elbow, elbow pads also? I couldn't. I don't see any elbow pads. No, sir. Um, I didn't put them on this time. Because we're predominantly in the trees, but, you know, when you had to, when you had to stop off and you want to get down and lower your, your, your exposure. So, yes, I had the knee pads. I'm going to definitely change it from the um, – and I – uh, out of my camo is already pre-positioned in my retreat, so I just grabbed all the scraps left here, and I realized that, you know, it was funny. They said, uh, even the seal came up to me later and said, uh, you know, normally when you do things like this, try to have the green stuff up high, and if you have to go a desert, do it low. But um, right. And he was right. And so, and so I was throwing lots of trees all over me, and whenever we, we set up for the ambush, I was the course was on ambush and tactics, and so... Out four would be given a certain way, and we have to, you know, we do the L. And they, the first one, you can see all the mistakes made. You know, there was a lot of fratricide, uh, blue on blue, man on man. I mean, um, and so what happened was, you know, we, we learned quickly uh, about, you know, how you have to stay in the L formation as much as possible. And, and even toward the end, you could see how the use of a drone would be highly effective. Even if you got it up so high, it would be very difficult for someone to shoot it. But I can see I'm going to be acquiring one of those with a high-end video because if it's if you have a lesser force against a much greater force, you can it you can definitely see where you're exposed, and uh, even if you do lose it, the the drone in that in the the initial attack, if you know there's 15 out there, it, it changes your mindset drastically as thinking okay, you know it's just uh, us against a couple of people. And then we did one night. I asked him two months ago. Can we bring some night vision and we can show the people who don't know about it how powerful it is and how much of a force multiplier it is? So they did it the, the first night, and they had a lot of uh, PVS-7s. A couple people had 14s, and I think there were two or three that had PVS-14s that were mounted as, as binoculars. And right. some people were astounded how the 7s were. And then when I toward the end, I said, here, you want to see the difference between the 7s, 2nd Gen, and before, and the 14, so I let some people use mine, and they're like, that's night and day. I said, yeah, that's why it costs so much. So don't get, I'd, it, I'd rather have somebody get one EBS 14 and wait a year or two and get another one than to buy a cheaper one, a Gen 2, and then find out, wow, there's, there's you know, it's like having a difference between a Lamborghini and a Daewoo. There, there is a noticeable difference, so save the money for that. <laughs> well, I agree. Um I was talking to somebody about spiders uh, recently, and uh, uh, they're 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 concerned about uh, sleeping someplace where spiders could be in, inhabiting. And I know there's one or more oils that spiders, if they go through a, if the oils go through a diffuser, the spiders don't want to be around. Or what would those oils oil or oils be there, Leon? Yes, sir. Yes. Well, the, the most prominent one is um, peppermint. All the mint families, they, they despise that whole menthol um, flavor profile. And so when they breathe it, it's actually very uh, aggressive against their um, breathing apparatus. And so, yeah, that, that's the most important one, the entire mint family. They can also use Terra Shield, which would also cover the other uh, in, in, um, the other insecting, insects. It's a, it's a great repellent, and I believe they're going to add these two new oils that came from the convention a week and a half ago, which will be citronella and lemon eucalyptus. 
and they found out that um, peppermint has a half life when you know for um, of a half an hour, and that's you know when, when you when you dosage it, it's a half an hour. So if you're just using, using peppermint specifically, that's why the diffusing is more effective than you know just spraying. And right. So, but lemongrass. I'm sorry. Uh, correction. Lemon, eucalyptus, and citronella are fantastic for, um, and has a much longer um, half life, and that and that means how much is in the body after, you know, you know the initial dose. You start off at 100 percent. When does it actually metabolize to 50 percent? And so, the peppermint was the one that was described, but um, citronella is much higher, and especially if you put it on the skin, and you put it on clothes. So yes, that would venture to say that'll be added to the Terra Shield, and you can, then you can also increase that. My and so what I'm going to do with my own my own bottles is it, until they have the new formula added, I'm just going to add uh-huh. a lot of vanilla to it. Well, when you live in the country, bugs are an issue. Uh, we have lots of bugs, and um, uh, I if I'm having a guest here, my, my daughter and, and grandson were here uh, two months ago. Uh, I have a whole protocol I go through to thoroughly vacuum uh, over, under, behind everything. Uh, then mm-hmm. about 24 hours before the guests arrive, I set off uh, a fogger in the premises, let that dissipate, and then uh, f- follow up, last but not least, with the uh, peppermint and the diffuser uh, while, the, while the guests are here. And, and of course, put down the, the, glue, the glue boards. Um, Something we find with these brown recluse spiders uh, is that the glue boards are very effective. Uh, the ones I use are fairly small. You put them out of the way under under furniture, behind furniture, uh, along the walls where the spiders like to like to creep and crawl. And they're very effective in capturing all kinds of, of uh, walking, crawling insects. Um, but you have to go through all these things to uh, to. Uh, have a safe haven for people to not have uh, any chance of being um, bitten by a, a brown recluse spider or any other bug as far as that goes. But it's doable. It's doable, and uh, it works. And uh, we have a good time living in the country here, Leon. Yes, sir, but I also agree with you in, in the fact that you want to minimize the exposure because brown recluse, you know, um, they have been associated a lot with the necrotiding necrotizing fasciitis or the flesh-eating bacteria. So um, I've seen people's, you know, the, the amputations attached to that. And so, you know, to minimize that, and and, and I saw a gnarly-looking three-inch, they call it a, a tunnel fire, uh, spider, and I have a picture of that, and I also got a picture of a um, a, a rubber boa, which I didn't know existed here in America naturally when it, and I have pictures of it, and this guy picked it up on the side of the road, wrapped it, and it wrapped around his his hand. And apparently, some animal had got to it because it lost like the last ten percent of his tail. Uh huh. It, it was almost albino, and it was it was incredible to see it. It's on my, my GoPro, so I can't just literally send it to you. But yeah, I was I was quite surprised at how big this thing was. It was about sixteen inches long. But the spiders, people should be concerned about because bites from that, along with um, ticks. I mean, ticks, Lyme's disease as a whole, and in many cases, the ticks are up in the top three of being the most uh, of being the most um, virulent in the fact that you know they have so many pathogens that they can pass along with along with um, spiders. But you know, people think of flies bad pathogen, but you know, ticks are really bad, especially in the mountainous or not mountainous the forest areas of America, and it's, it's even bad here in Colorado, and I, I'd assume it's pretty bad there where you are, too. Well, it, it is for most people. Uh, up until maybe eight or ten years ago, I I had as many ticks as anybody else, but something about my physiology must have changed, my, my pH, something, because I don't. I just don't find ticks on me anymore. It's her. You know, I, I go for a, a one mile walk every evening and uh, through the woods and through the fields, and so I'm I'm certainly exposed to them. But um, if one does get on me, they don't seem to want to latch on. They just kind of walk around until I take a shower and they're gone. Um, so I'm I'm blessed in that regard. But but uh, ticks and Lyme disease is a serious matter, isn't it, Leon? Absolutely, and there are people who have, I mean, I've, I've heard of people being 
let go from their job because of how how disjointed and how much cognitive loss they impaired or <laughs> impacted because of the the bites. And so, yeah, they they call it Lyme's uh, Lyme brain is the name of it, Lyme's disease, and it is very it is very very much an issue here in America, and it seems to only be getting worse. And so, I would definitely recommend you know you use that when you when you go out in those places, and that's another thing I need to increase more of is my amount of a terror, terror shield, which is a proprietary blend by doTERRA that is and is a great repellent and uh, until, you know, they, they impact or until they change the, the, the old formula, I'm going to add a lot so more. So terror, terror. somebody would use terror shield as a bug repellent anytime they're going outside then, wouldn't they? That's correct. And so you put that on you know, in advance, so you don't get bit, and you can. And what's unlike, you know, DEETS and that that carcinogen that they, you see that you know mothers at the park will put on their kids, even though it says do not put on the skin. Just you're supposed to be only on the clothes. But how many times have you seen the kids just getting inundated by it? And it is it is terrible oh, that they do it anyway. It, Army issue insect repellent in Vietnam uh, did not have any perfume in it. It was just the pure chemical, and so we had. Uh, mosquito nets over our bunks and uh, a lot of the guys including myself would keep them as put the mosquito net down um, about an hour before we wanted to sleep and spray the inside of the mosquito net with this disgusting uh, spray and then uh, after about an hour go in there and lay down and sleep uh, hopefully bug free um, and um, you know I got so used to having a mosquito net when I got back to the States, when I, I, I woke up at the first few mornings reaching out to touch the mosquito net that wasn't there. I was really disoriented there, Leon. <laughs> um, you know, where's my mosquito net? There's something wrong. There's something, what, what's what's happening here? You know, uh, <laughs> it's amazing how little habits like that can become such a big part of your life. Yes, sir. And, and when, you, when you think about the the impact, I mean, many times we just discount it. And so if you get bitten and stung by flies, people always ask, well, what are the best oils for that? Well, there's a blend by doTERRA called uh, Purify. And that has a, a whole list of oils, but one of the biggest ones in there is lavender. And so it is a analgesic. It is also an anti-inflammatory. And it is fantastic for the, the anti-itching. And so it's an antihistamine as well. And so Purify is a very good one to, to have on hand, uh, specifically for bites that occur after. But if you can be prophylactic and you can you can prevent it from happening in the first place, that's the best way to go. Hold that you. thought, Leon. Hold that thought. we got a break. The call number is 800-313-9443. As a listener of RBN, you're surely concerned about being informed and being ready for whatever may come. Please consider the following questionnaire as a soul-jarring wake-up call. If you answer no to more than two of these following questions, you probably aren't going to make it through any major disruption in our country. The questions were compiled by people that have been there. Are you really ready? Do you own your own firearm for the primary defense and protection of you and your loved ones? Have you ever been professionally trained to stand against life-threatening behavior? Have you ever practiced enough to fire 500 rounds during a two- to four-day time frame, day and night? Can you load, unload, fire, and clear a jam in total darkness? Have all the adults in your household been professionally trained? Are you, life and death, comfortable with your abilities with pistol, revolver, shotgun, and rifle? Are you aware that everything that you do to prepare for an emergency is a waste of time, money and energy? If you haven't honed your abilities to their highest level to protect and keep what you have, do you have the repair parts that will most likely be needed for each of your firearm, and do you have the ability to install those parts? Could you completely clean every firearm you own? Are you aware that your body won't go where your mind hasn't been? In other words, without proper training, followed by regular practice, you probably will not win a gunfight. Well, 
How did you measure up? Take the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to start correcting your deficiencies by receiving your Commander Lifetime Membership with Front Sight Firearms Training Facility. A one-time donation to RBN for $500 will give you a Commander Lifetime Membership at Front Sight as a tremendously huge thank you bonus. See details on RBN's webpage to make it happen. The clock is ticking. You had better be ready before it happens. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Republic Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. Tuesday, the 24th of September. We're going on a cruise. Leon's going with us. Uh, we've got others going with us, already signed up, re- booked their cabins. There's a high likelihood that Sam Andrews, our Monday, uh, Fire, uh, Farms Monday guest, will be going with us. And not, it is not confirmed yet. I'll be speaking in Orlando on Friday the 8th. Uh, we'll get confirmation of the venue probably next week. Uh, Steve Ben Noon is working with me on that. It'll be a lot of fun. This cruise will be a lot of fun. Leaving Port Canaveral Saturday, the 9th of February, returning a week later. The uh, Harmony of the Seas is a massive resort, luxury resort on the water. 20 restaurants, different activities every day that are fun. We're going to have our own activities course. Uh, everybody that goes with me and, and Leon will be getting together privately to discuss the things we talk about on the radio. Uh, the training, uh, things that we discuss, geopolitical matters, with no commercials, and plenty of time to just talk about things in detail. Details at my website at thelibertyman.com. You can call my uh, cruise director. If you do not have Internet access, my cruise director, Betsy Murphy, will be glad to mail you a nice full-color brochure. Betsy's telephone is 636-530-9502. We're visiting with Leon Green. We're talking about doTERRA essential oils and related topics and not-so-related topics. And it's a great opportunity. Uh, Here's how you get started. First of all, go to my website, thelibertyman.com, and under products, just click on products. There's a drop-down menu, and you'll see the fourth thing down is doTERRA oils. That's your. uh, It goes directly to my landing page with doTERRA. That's number one. Number two, get yourself two versions, two editions of the same book. The fifth edition and now the 11th edition just published this month of the book titled Modern Essentials. Then you're ready to go. Now, if you need private consultation or if you'd like to make doTERRA into a a part-time business and have some extra extra stream of income, just give Leon a call. Uh, His telephone is 303 495-2188. Four nine or five two one eight eight. I say again three zero three four nine or five two one eight eight. That's Mountain Time if he's not there because he's off doing some training that I'm envious and jealous of. Just leave him a message and he'll get back with you. Um, Leon DoTerra is a a place where people can really dramatically change their life for the better, uh, can't they, sir? Absolutely. The the, the impact positive impact these oils can have in your life is, is considerable. I mean, even this weekend when I was hopping up and down all these hills with a bunch of people younger than me and also a couple of people older, you know, having the deep blue or pain abatement and elimination, 
And also breathing. Think about it. If you're at a mile and you're you're carrying 40 pounds on your back. What altitude? We're on these hills. We're at, you know, it's Salt Lake City, so it's pretty much mile high, too. Okay. 5,000 feet or so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Well, the air, so when, the air is definitely, the air is definitely yep. thinner when you get a mile above sea level. Correct. And uh, um, I had taken a, a medic course earlier, and I talked about the, the normal saturation of oxygen in the blood of an, an adult is 95%. But when you come to altitude, you know, it can drop down to you know, 92, 93%. And you're like, well, that's only 3% difference. Well, it makes a huge impact on cognitive activity and exercise. And so, you know, most 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 people, most adults can adapt in about two to three weeks, depending on, you know, their fitness level. And so, you know, I already live in, I live in Denver, so I'm already here. But there are times when I go up to 10,000 or I go skiing at 13,000. I'm like, whoa, I can definitely feel it here. So I, I, I realize that... Um, Cardio, cardio fitness is, is imperative, especially thinking that, you know, yeah, you're going to need your, your fast twitch muscles for certain things, but for the most part, for you to be consistent, you know, moving, like you was talking about earlier, cutting the firewood and just doing slow endurance, gardening, laundry, the whole gamut of everything that humans do that we've, got, we've taken for granted with all of the electronics and elect- electrical power to saving devices – that is going to, it may go away. And then people say, well, I have a gas generator. Well, gas is eventually going to go bad or it's going to um, no longer be available. And so propane is by far the, the next best thing. And matter of fact, one of the guys there in the class showed me a picture of a one of the red Honda 2200s and they had a propane tank and he didn't know that was feasible. I said, yeah, you can do that in propane last indefinitely. So that's by far the best way to go. Just make sure you keep that Honda in a Faraday cage if you want to use that guaranteed in the future. And so he, you know, he didn't know much about the EMP aspect, but I said, yes, that'd be something that'd be a, a great way to go. I need to buy an adapter for my own Yamaha so I can do the same thing as well. Well, I, I talked to somebody about, a, I was at a British car show Saturday and uh, I was looking at one of my favorite cars and a favorite car I own, which was a Morgan plus four and, and it was 1968, and the owner was a woman. I said, you know, when these cars came from the factory, they were uh, ran on propane. She says, yeah, I know that. This one's been converted back to gasoline. Um, <laughs> but, uh, well, it was the, 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 the regulations changed in 68 for these emissions, and that's how they met them for a while. We have a bottom-of-the-hour break. Call number is 800-313-9443. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Ladies and gentlemen, J.R. Moore here. We have a special promotion going on at Republic Broadcasting. This is a fundraiser for Republic Broadcasting involving the Energy Planner. Mail me a postcard. My address is at my website at thelibertyman.com. We pick a postcard every other Thursday. When your postcard is drawn out, you get to buy an energy planner for $215 instead of $285, $70 discount. $200 goes to Republic Broadcasting. You also get a 10% discount on my mattress pads. So get those postcards in, put your name, your telephone number, your email address on there, and when your postcard is drawn, you get to get an energy cleaner for $215 instead of $285. Mattress pads, 10% off. Help us out at Republic Broadcasting and help yourself to get an energy cleaner at a deep discount. It's a win-win situation for everybody. We hope you can get these postcards in soon. Thank you very much. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. J.R. Moore here on Tuesday, the 24th of September. My website is thelibertyman.com. That's thelibertyman.com. Uh, lots of things there. We have 
daily updates if you're looking to stay up to speed on what's going on with geopolitical matters. Just scroll, <coughs> excuse me, scroll down to where it says <coughs> open source intelligence. Excuse me. This is put together by a friend of mine, former counter, counterintelligence agent. <coughs> And I got a bit of a cough there, sorry. Updated daily. Dozens of articles every day. And um, also, of course, at my website, you'll find an energy clinic for sale. Uh, if you have arthritis pain, what are you waiting for? Seriously, what are you waiting for? It's not going to fix itself. Get yourself an energy cleaner. $285 shipping included to American zip codes. And the mattress pads that go with them, I got everything in inventory. This, the uh, handy travel size, the uh, twin size, full queen king. Even I got some California kings in stock right now. Everything's right there, ready to be, to be shipped. And this is my home business. When you place your order, I box them up. I take them to the little country post office at Cherryville, Missouri, where you can get a, all the coffee you can drink all day long for 75 cents. I just got a cup of coffee yesterday in, in St. Louis, $2.15 for one little cup of coffee. So I'll get the details at my website at thelibertyman.com on the energy cleaner, the mattress pads. You can also call my toll-free hour line 24 hours a day. Don't try to contact me. You'll, you, won't, you won't get me. This is my order line, professional order takers, 800-592-9543. I say again, 800-592-9543. Visiting with Leon Green, we're talking about doTERRA essential oils and related matters and not so related matters. And it's part of an overall healthy lifestyle. And uh, it's not the silver bullet. If you think you can continue uh, having the three, fa- three main food groups being beer, pizza, and ice cream, and take and use doTERRA oils and be healthy, well, you're wrong. Uh, it's going to take more than just doTERRA oils. It's going to take some lifestyle changes, attitude changes, exercise changes, nutritional uh, changes, dietary changes. All these things combine together, don't they, Leon? That's correct, sir. And matter of fact, knowing what's coming down the pike um, in January, you know, January third, I'm doing a, we're doing an elk hunt, so they actually have a tag for it. an elk. And but then we have to, they're going to shoot the elk in the middle of snow up in the mountains that you just saw, and they already have snow in the mountains nearby. And then who gets to, who gets to drag this thing out of there? It one of those things weigh twelve hundred, fifteen hundred pounds. Correct, but we're going to have to process it, throw them on a sled, and snowshoe out under Op 4. So we're going to have opposing forces trying to steal our meat and follow us back. So, be... <laughs> so you, you and your buddies are going to be dragging uh, more than a, a half a ton of the 1,000 pounds. So it will be more than half a ton of, um, of this moose on a sled, while the, the opposing forces, the Op 4, are going to be... A footloose and fancy free, not trying to drag more than half a ton of meat on a sled. I, I don't think you got a snowball's chance in hell there, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it's really a moose. It's a moose. You're right. Those things weigh up to a ton and some. Now this is only one of the lightweight elk, so hopefully it's oh, not it's an elk. Big, it's not yeah. a moose. Okay, yeah. a lightweight elk. And you're looking at what? Nine hundred pounds instead of a, t- a ton. Yes, sir. And so I talked to the guy <laughs> and I asked him. <laughs> You know, All we right. have 15 people, and I, I pray everybody this could shows be a movie. This, because... this could be a movie, a <laughs> reality show. I hope it doesn't get that graphic. <laughs> I, I, yes. I, I think there's a high likelihood that it could there. Um, well, at the end of the day, who, who gets the elk, elk meat? Well, I think I'm going to take some elk meat after I carried it, you know, four miles and and waist deep snow and we're using snowshoes and I'm going to get it but I have some inexpensive ones but I'm going to get some higher end ones that, that I don't have to worry about breaking but I want to get some practice in before I have to lug this you know they're going to process it up in the mountains the bone saw and everything and we're going to we're going to take off and leave and so um, but we have to and, and I, one thing I definitely need to do is find my thermal scopes because that will help drastically they think hey we, they can just put on white camo and get away but then right. yeah Right. Well, well, thermal imaging is, is, is thermal imaging would make a big difference in that environment. You know, well, snowshoeing even with, with, without dragging an elk behind you is one of the most strenuous physical activities a human being can engage in, 
and um, especially if you have any uphill parts at all, um, that would be quite a challenge. Yes, sir. So, yes, I think about what I was trying to say is, you know, getting in shape and staying in shape. And so yeah, it's crucial now, but people dismiss it because, like, ah, I can worry about it later. And this is one thing I learned this weekend. Did you see how much the Fed has opened their discount window and they've given $370 billion four times, you know, a total of 375 four times all these banks that can't get money? I was in a meeting yesterday, and that was... It's called quantitative easing, I believe, and um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. it's uh, it, it's bad. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm I regret that they're doing it. On one hand, on the other, uh, my my uh, opinion is we need to do whatever it takes to keep this economy afloat, at least until President Trump gets reelected. Uh, and because uh, if, if the if the economy goes down, it'll be blamed on the president, even though he's doing everything he can to make it make America great again and do the best he can with the economy. But he will get the blame for it, even though it was not his fault, won't he? Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I thought they were trying to keep it afloat for Obama just because, you know, the Democrats or the communists were trying to say, hey, you know, this is going to, you know, look at the just like Clinton. You know, everybody says Clinton was the great no, he was. I call them. Just, I consider them more like bus drivers. Who was driving the bus when the accident occurred, or when you got through? You when you avoided the accident. So you know, Clinton didn't do anything special. All these things were intact before him. He just he just rode the wave of, of that increase. And so and everybody looks at him as a demagogue. But he he has he has such an evil past, and the number of people dead bodies in the skeleton in the skeleton closet is just keep mounting even after. And now with Miss Clinton, she's doing all the silly things and. Her, her count is getting higher too, so it's it's he's doing the best he can do with what he has. But I could see they would blame everything on him, you know, if any crashes occurred. That's right, that's right. Well, uh, nothing us uh, barefoot peasants out here in, in the flower land can do to to stop that or change it. What we can do is take care of ourselves, take care of the people we we care about, which includes becoming knowledgeable of the oils. That means getting the books I mentioned, uh, Modern Essentials, 5th edition, Modern Essentials, 11th edition, uh, incorporating these things into your life so you can uh, be healthier um, and, and enjoy real health as opposed to taking pharmaceutical products to cover up and mask uh, symptoms, which is what most pharmaceutical products do, don't they? Absolutely. And, and, and what they want to do is minimize, mitigate the symptoms, but they aren't in the curative in the, in the traditional uh, drug or pharmaceutical uh, model because if you're healthy, think about it. If you're absolutely healthy and you don't have to go to the hospital, they don't get paid any money. Whereas if you are dead, they don't get paid any money. But if you're in between that, those extremes, then what happens is it's a $2 trillion industry. And you're always going to have uh, trauma. You're going to hear the fire alarm going on the road. Somebody got in a car accident. I saw three this weekend and one truck. I should have sent that picture of in Wyoming, it just flipped over and just laying in the middle of the highway. It looked like a big carcass. And so um, trauma is always going to happen. But the preventative ones, prostate cancer and colon cancer. Colon cancer is the number one cancer that can be avoided. So but that's attached to excessive meats, especially the processed meats. Um, having a high sugar diet, beer, all the white white rice, all white bread, because that uh, acidizes the body and cancers can't exist in an alkaline body. And so That's right. if people just met on a sugar, they could have a huge impact. I've got two calls just on this trip alone. You know, people frantic about their relatives. And, you know, Steve, he contacted me about a gentleman who had prostate cancer. And so because of that, it's like, wow, it's getting worse. And people think, oh, yeah, you know, it only hurts other people. But one in two men in America will have cancer and one in three women. So it. It impacts a huge amount of people, and the repercussions are huge. Right. The, the repercussions are massive. Now, we're not saying the terra oils will, will keep you cancer-free, but if the whole body is healthier and, and, and alkaline, then you're dramatically less uh, reduced risk of cancer because of that alkaline, healthy body, correct? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, when they, when they test for cancer, when they do the, the test, 
what they use is glucose to find it. And so if you think about it in that capacity, if, if they're using sugar to find where the cancer uh, nodes are throughout the body, that is where the, I mean, the, the cancer is so pervasive, it actually will reroute blood vessels in order to get more blood to that, that specific one. That's why you see these tumors that, you know, they were, they were the size of a, a grape one time, and then three months later it's the size of a, a, a muskmelon because they, it can reroute blood, and that's how pervasive it is. So, you know, it, it's not something to be played with, and there are, there are different modalities. And one is, um, you know, that I, I, I sent to Steve was the, the Truth About Cancer. It's a YouTube webinar series, and they have like 15 uh, experts, doctors, researchers um, worldwide, and it, they show the efficacy that they have used. So they've used Royal Rife technology and the Gershon techniques and many others. And so the by having access to these techniques and methods, you know, it has a huge impact after the cancer is already started, but if you can prevent it by changing your diet, exercise, sleep is incredible for that. We talked about it four months ago after watching that movie, the show on um, cancer, the sleepless in America, and, and it showed one of the biggest impacts of lack of sleep, which Americans are notorious for, is it is directly related to the amount of cancer. And so, you know, the people are like, we think, you know, I, I can get by with four hours of sleep. You may mentally think about that, but um, your body is going to impact it in depression, diabetes, cancer, uh, suicide, Alzheimer's, dementia. All those are directly related to lack of sleep. So, you know, we, we talk about exercise a lot, but sleep is, is something crucial. And we, we as a sophisticated Americans dismiss, you know, outright and, and it's much to our detriment. Absolutely. Well, as the old saying goes from the TV commercial back in the, I guess it was the 60s, you can't fool Mother Nature. Um, you know, it's, not, <laughs> oh, it's, it's not nice to fool Mother Nature. That's what it was. It's not yes, nice to right. fool Mother Nature. And uh, people think they can fool Mother Nature and uh, uh, dis intentionally disrupt the circadian rhythm and stay up until... 2 a.m. And, and sleep until noon and think that causes no harm. It does cause harm. Uh, shift workers, uh, police, firemen, uh, nurses, uh, shift workers have all kinds of health-related issues because of their circadian rhythm is constantly disrupted, don't, or, don't they? Absolutely. And if, if somebody wants to see that, I got that, that, that video at a, at a local library. And so it's not hard to find. It's called Sleepless in America. And it... it it starts off where a resident medical student ran into a car and killed the majority of his family. And it showed how, even though he was doing his best, and these residencies, you know, it can be 10, 12, 24 hour long. Uh, in essence, they're doing the same thing they do with the special forces. They want to see how far they can push them before they crack. Well, you don't want somebody who's that far um, astray to be working on your children or yourself making mistakes. And in this case, he was just driving home. He fell asleep at the wheel, killed the mother and three of the kids. And so it is a very good, very um, captivating video. So if you get a chance, get it for free. Uh, it may be available on YouTube, but I'm positive you can get it at most, most um, good libraries. And it, mine is not phenomenal, but it has it. And I would highly recommend it for people to watch it because it goes in depth about cancer and diabetes and overweight. And when people talk about Hey, I'm gaining weight and I can't lose it. Well, when you mess up the circadian rhythm, it affects the glucose in your body, which also leads to more diabetes. And they even did it at this most recent, most recent um, convention. They had a, a they had a, um, there were 30,000 people at it. And at the arena, they had a bunch of people stand up and saying, okay, in five years, these more people are going to be dead. So this one whole section so all these people who die of, of um, cardiac or cardiovascular uh, disease, which is the number one killer in America, and cancer is number two. And I went down the list and showed all these dead people, and they all had they all stood up. And then it did the diabetes, and pretty much the bottom whole floor. So over sixteen thousand people stood up, 
and those are the ones who would get diabetes in the next five years. And it just blew me away as how, you know, people get diabetes every five seconds in America. And that can be, and this is type 2 diabetes, so it's not like they were born with it. Their right. diet, man, the body is going to not have diabetes. So, you know, it is something that we can prevent, but people, they just get complacent with the propaganda on TV, and it's going to be very detrimental to their lives. And and one other thing he talks about was this is the first generation since 1914, 1918, that is going to die earlier than their parents. Than their parents. And that's because yep. of the diet. Yes. Well, there's a lot of factors into it, including the heroin heroin epidemic and the heroin overdoses. But uh, it's been more than a century since uh, the children did not outlive their parents, and that, that's 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 just a crying shame. It doesn't need to be that way. Uh, I see at Amazon they've got the film Sleepless in America for sale. The used copies are. Sixteen dollars fifty nine cents. New ones are a hundred dollars of all things. I guess it's out of print, uh, but it's a National Geographic uh, documentary, and it's the kind of thing a large library would keep in, in stock. I would think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And matter of fact, I will be sending the information on. They're going to be doing a regional uh, conference. They do an update so people can learn more about the new oils. They can be exposed to doTERRA as well, locally. So I will send you those, those links so you can see what's going to be in the St. Louis area. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'd like, to, I'd like to attend one of those. So get the links to me, and we can we can talk about it. Maybe I can get them on my website, and, and people can attend the ones yes, that are closest to them. That would be great. Yes, and they do it worldwide. So people are like, well, I'm, right now I'm taking off to Thailand for you know five months. They're going to be all over the world. So, yeah, doTERRA is now a – is actually – the behemoth in the essential oil industry because we we focus on purity and efficacy potency and so if we don't pursue anything else hold that so thought, I'll wait till hold that thought we got a break great It's happening, ladies and gentlemen. We here at RBN are working with Front Sight Firearms Training Institute to bring our audience the best in combat, tactical, and defensive firearms training. Whether you're a private citizen who is new to firearms or you have a concealed weapon permit and want a level of training that surpasses what you've received from your local gun range, Front Sight provides priceless education and skills taught by seasoned law enforcement, military, and private citizen instructors to levels that far exceed law enforcement and military standard. With nearly a million responsible citizens trained from every town, city, and state from across the United States, Front Sight has bolstered the Patriot movement to a whole new level. Contact Dan Sutterfield by phone at 573-762-2356 or 573-465-2356 or shoot him an email at domedan, D-O-M-E-D-A-N at hotmail.com. This is a limited time opportunity. Don't miss it. Back, ladies and gentlemen, Jared Moore here on Tuesday, the 24th of September. Well, Leon, we haven't mentioned it for a while, but uh, the essential oils are mentioned in the Holy Bible uh, more than 300 times, aren't they? Yes, sir. And when you think of uh, like Rose of Sharon, uh, and, lavender, cassia, myrrh, they're, they're mentioned, and they've been, the reason why they're mentioned because of how effective they are. And, and like you already right. said, the Bible does waste time on, on, on simple issues. That's so right. They are important. That's right. Well, uh, uh, before I understood what the oils really were, I always thought that the three wise men wanted baby Jesus to smell nice, which is why they brought frankincense. Uh, but uh, they weren't concerned about baby Jesus having a, a pleasant scent, were they? Correct. No, they, and think about it. He brought one, you know, they brought... Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So both of those are health-related. Gold was the financial aspect. So 
you can see it was two to one ratio of the importance. Because if you're not around, it doesn't matter how much money you have, you're not going to be healthy or you're not going to be alive, whether these are pathogens, infections. So it's, it's important that you have the, the protection in advance. And so when I come down and see um, John and Steve in, in, the, in, the, in 2020 for the cruise, on the, on the plane, we're gonna be, I'm going to be using On Guard every 15 minutes because every bug you can think of, the Super TB, MRSA, is going to be on the, going to be on the planes. And they use the bathrooms, they touch the, everything that if people touch. You're going to have aspect to it. I mean, you're going to have, you're going to be exposed to. So you protect yourself in advance. I just went to, on the way back from my trip to Utah, you see these people coming out of the bathroom and they just bypass the, the, the sink. And I'm like, wow. Right. And I follow, and I'm like, I, I'm not even about to touch anything that they touch. Use my elbow to get out of here because all those, all that fecal stuff is going to be everywhere. And people are going to get sick now, let alone when everything goes south, when they have poor, um, Hygiene and sanitation. Well, the majority of injuries in, in almost all wars are minor injuries and illnesses and things related to uh, poor hygiene and poor nutrition. Uh, and, and, of course, the bombs and bullets kill a lot of people. But uh, what kills the most people is uh, those minor things that don't have to happen. Correct, Leon? Correct. You think about the Civil War. More people died from infections than they did from the bullets. That's right. That's right. Well, uh, my great-grandfather was inducted into the Union Army uh, in Steelville, Missouri, right down the street from me here, uh, in 1865. Not long before the war ended. I think it was just a few months before the war ended, which probably saved his life, which meant I got the opportunity to be here. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, and I'm glad I'm glad his life was saved. Uh, but uh, we have we have a, certainly a high potential of hard times ahead for us. And if people have the oils and know how to use them, they have a lot better chance of surviving, don't they? Absolutely. So you know you you're going to enjoy life better now because you'll be healthier. You'll be exposed to less bugs, and you won't be sick in the bathroom, toilet. And so Leon, thank you, sir. You We're out of time. We'll have you back next Tuesday. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. Okay, that's it for the day. Get your medical supplies, your energy cleaning, your essential oils. Now, while you can, your farm's ammunition. Never, ever.